What's up everybody and welcome. It's been a minute since I've seen you guys. Well, since you've seen me. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to show you three different ways on how to rewire your fuel pump. Stay tuned. All right, and welcome. So if you're new to this channel, my name is Alex. I'm a mechanical engineer with a never ending love for his rotary. And I simply make these YouTube videos as I'm rebuilding my RX-7 as a way to keep these old cars alive and keep the information flowing. That's all. Uh, if you ever have questions or comments on how to fix your FC3 as RX-7 or just working on a rotary in general, feel free to ask in the comments down below or find me on Instagram at rotary underscore night. That's night like night in shining armor. Anyways, on to the episode. First off, you might be thinking, why do I want to rewire my fuel pump? Why? 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 Well, the answer is really simple. All I want to do is I guarantee a certain amount of voltage to my fuel pump. This car is about 30 years old, so the wiring is 30 years old, and the components that control the fuel pump, I'm mainly talking about a resistor relay box, which I'll explain later. This old unit is 30 years old. It's time for a little refresh. So I'm going to show you how to bypass some of this old wiring and what we can do to guarantee we get a constant voltage to the back of the car. And this will be applicable for anyone who has just a regular street application to all out track car. I'm going to show you these three different ways and show you what I did with mine and why I chose that method. So option one is to delete this resistor relay. Now I'm going to show you a wire, I'm going to show you a wiring diagram that explains exactly what this does and how it works and why I wanted to remove it. Uh, so the first one is deleting that. The second one is to bypass the wiring altogether for that resistor relay. And that's the method I did for option two. Option three is creating a whole new fuel circuit uh, for the fuel pump. And now this is what most people will do with an aftermarket, or sorry, with lots of aftermarket parts on their car or big power adders. I'll show you what you need to do and what you need to know on how to re rewire a whole new fuel circuit onto your car. So I've got my tablet here and on here I got the wiring diagrams for the fuel circuit. I'm gonna do my best to show you uh, how this whole system works without boring you to death and sounding like a boring engineering professor. Uh, if I'm slacking, I'm sorry, but what can I do? Let's go. All right, everybody. So here's our stock wiring diagram for the FC fuel circuit. Now I'm going to go ahead and explain this in general for the beginners so they understand what's going on and why we're removing this resistor relay. Now, if you want these later for your reference, you can go ahead and take a screen grab. What I'm going to try to do is upload these and if I find a way to do it, I'll put a link in the description below so you can download the presentation I made with all of these diagrams. Okay, so what's going on here? First, I'm going to explain the three components on the right. We have Mazda's stock fuel pump relay, also known as the circuit opening relay, if you refer to any Mazda wiring diagrams. We have the fuel pump resistor relay. This is the box that we want to remove. And then we have the fuel pump itself. So let me explain what is going on with these guys. Now the fuel pump relay is basically the same as your typical four pin or five pin relay that you can buy at any auto parts store. The only difference we have two coils here compared to one of a typical relay. So one of these coils is hooked up to the ECU and inhibitor switches. So like say you have an automatic car and you need, you need to have it in park before you can actually start the car. That's what that is. Or you have one going to the ignition. On top of that, we have this check connector over here. And what is this guy? As it's shown right now, this is open. These are not connected. But what you can do if you ever want to prime the fuel system, Say for example, you need to replace your fuel filter. You need to empty all the fuel out of the system, right? Then when you put the new filter in and you hook everything back up, all your fuel lines are dry. So before you start the car, you put a jumper wire here on this check connector. When you close this, this circuit here, what that does is that allows you to put the car into the on position without starting it. And it allows you to prime the fuel system. So it'll make the pump run without you actually starting the car. Just a little FYI. So that's the only difference from the Mazda fuel pump relay compared to a normal relay. The fuel pump resistor relay has three leads going in and three coming out. 
The three going in are all the same power wire coming from the, um, the fuel pump relay. There's two paths that the current can take when going to the fuel pump. A one through a resistor, which gives us a low voltage output, and one that's straight through. It just depends if this plunger is open or closed. The coil, which is connected to the ECU here, opens and closes this plunger depending on the load that is required. Now we have an example of what is happening when the fuel pump sees a low voltage. Why would the fuel pump see low voltage? Let's say the car is idling or you have a low load application. Like you have barely any gas on the throttle. You're driving like grandma right now. Or you're rolling by the popos in California. You don't only get slapped with a new exhaust law ticket. This is where the energy is going or the current is going. So we go from the positive battery terminal through our main fuse into the ignition switch. From there, we go through our 15 amp fuse into the stock uh, fuel pump relay. From there, you'll now notice this plunger is closed. So the current will go down through to the front of the car to the fuel pump resistor relay. From there, because this plunger is gonna be open, because the ECU tells it, nope, this needs to be open right now. The only place for this to go is through the resistor. So the current will go through this resistor, the voltage will drop, and it goes to the fuel pump. From there, it goes through to the ground and closes the circuit. Now we got the high voltage application. Now this application is when you're trying to throw some flames and show off the braps. So from the positive battery terminal, it's exactly the same. However, if we go to the fuel pump resistor relay, what you're gonna notice now is this plunger is closed. So the ECU tells the resistor relay, it's time to close this plunger. And as I learned from my uh, electronics 101, the current will always take the path of least resistance. So with the plunger closed, the current then goes straight through here and we get a high voltage signal straight to the fuel pump. So this is what we see from the battery. So that fuel pump gets a nice juicy 12 or 14 volts. Why did Mazda do this? Why do we have a high voltage and a low voltage circuit? Well, it's really simple. It's to prolong the life of the fuel pump. That's all it is. So for a, a daily driver, it makes total sense that you want to prolong the life of the fuel pump as long as you can. However, for guys like me who use this on the weekend or you're using it on the track or whatever reason, we don't care so much. Instead, because we have aftermarket turbos or we got an aftermarket exhaust and we got bigger injectors, which, what we would rather have instead of a prolonged fuel pump is to make sure we have sufficient fuel pressure because we don't want these things to go. There it goes. It's still floored. So in essence, that's how this circuit works. And the reason why we want to get rid of this resistor relay box is because we want solid voltage all the time to the fuel pump. All right, so now I've explained to you how the fuel system works and why we wanna delete the resistor relay. Now this new schematic is to show you what wires we'll need to cut or splice and how we're gonna get rid of things. In the background, you'll see an FC so you can get an idea of where these parts are located on the car. Now I'm gonna go through those three options I mentioned and as I explain these options, I'll put in some video of me working on the car so you know where things are and how to access them. Now we got the same wiring from before. The only difference is I put it, I displayed it in a way so you can actually see where the connectors are going and how everything is labeled nicely with regards to the clips. Now, when you look at these clips, imagine you unplugged it and you're looking down the barrel of the clip and you can see the spades in the inside. That's the direction we're looking at these. So where can you find these guys? Well, the resistor relay is underneath the hood, right behind the passenger headlight you'll probably have to remove your stock airbox to get access to it. Unless you're like me and I don't have a stock airbox in which, well, it was easy access. The stock fuel pump relay will be mounted underneath the dash right next to the steering shaft. And then the fuel pump connector will actually be mounted in the trunk right behind the shock tower on the driver's side, right here. So you have to take off some of the interior trim to get access to it. On to option one, deleting the resistor relay box. So this is the easiest method out of all three methods. 
However, there are a few caveats when doing this. So the first thing we're going to do is open up the hood and go underneath and remove this resistor relay box. You'll find it, as I mentioned, right behind the passenger headlight. Now when you remove this from the car, what you're going to do is you're going to cut all the connectors that go to the resistor relay box. There's other way to do this. However, this is the method I chose. Now, if you want to sell this part, you can go ahead and save it and, and run these wires in a different way. This is just how I decided to do it. And I'm throwing this thing in the trash. Okay, so when you, after you cut the wires from the resistor relay box, you're going to delete the two in the middle. So B and E here. B was just one of the power wires coming in and E was going to the ECU. We don't need those anymore. Now the other two wires, we have two power wires coming in and two power wires going out. We want to close the circuit. So we're going to make a jumper wire from A to D. Now all I did was I took the wires that were cut on the connector of the resistor relay box and I soldered those two together to make a loop. So we do that from A to D and from C to F. And you have a nice little loop that closes off the circuit. So power comes in, power goes out. Power comes in, power goes out, and it goes back into the same uh, connection down the fuel pump connector. This is by far the easiest way to do it. You don't have to remove any interior. All you need to do is simply solder a couple wires together. You don't even have to solder them together. To be honest, you can simply crimp them together. Now the one thing that I don't like about this is you have all this excess wiring that's running from the fuel pump relay underneath the dash all the way to the front of the car under the passenger headlight and then all the way back to the fuel pump and way back about a year ago I made a video about the voltage drop from here all the way to the fuel pump and you can see as much as half a volt uh, drop between those two just because of the distance from the wires it's an absolutely terrible video I made because the background music is way too loud. But if you're brave enough to watch it, you can go feel free to watch it. And I'll put a link down below or in a card somewhere. So that's option one and the easiest option to do. Now option two is the option that I did. And I'm going to tell you why. Because of those excess wires running from the front passenger headlight all the way back seemed excessive. What I did is I replaced the power wire going from the fuel pump relay and I ran it directly to the fuel pump. So all I did was I had to remove some of the interior so I can run the wire underneath and you're going to need a new 12 gauge wire. So to do this we're going to find the fuel pump relay underneath the dash. It's going to be mounted right next to the steering shaft. You're going to unplug it and then you're going to depin the old power wire that goes to the fuel pump resistor relay. This one. You're going to depin that and then you're going to cut it. Now we're going to keep that spade because with a little bit of excess wire on it. We want that because we're going to solder our new 12 gauge wire onto that old wire left onto the spade. The part that stayed in the car on the harness, just tape that off with electrical tape and put it to the side. Remember, we don't want any exposed wires. And you're going to do the same thing over here on the fuel pump connector. You're going to depin the stock power wire that's going to the fuel pump connector. You're going to cut it, but leave yourself a little bit of wire onto the spade because you're going to solder this new 12 gauge wire onto there as well. And again, you don't have to solder if you don't have a soldering iron. You can use crimp connectors for this. I soldered it because that was my preference. In terms of length of wire, Get yourself about 10 feet of wire uh, to reach from here all the way back to here. And that's it. You don't need to buy any fuses. You don't need to buy anything else. The only thing that's difficult with this, in all honesty, is, is removing the interior. Other than that, it's a walk in the park. And now the third and final option, creating a whole new fuel circuit. So in this option, we're no longer going to need the stock fuel pump relay or the resistor relay box from before. Now, who wants to run this? Because I have a hybrid turbo, but I have stock injectors, and I do have an aftermarket exhaust, but I do have a catalytic converter with very, very modest boost levels. So for me, having lots of fuel is not really a requirement. But for those people with aftermarket turbos, bigger injectors, and probably an aftermarket ECU, you're gonna have to rewire in a whole new fuel circuit. 
So what is that going to look like? It's going to look something like this. Now we have our typical battery up here up front. Unless you're like me and you relocated your battery behind the passenger seat here. But let's just say that to keep things simple, you have your battery up front. You're going to need some new 12 gauge wire to run to the back of the car or wherever you want to mount your relay. You're going to need a new 15 amp fuse, but make sure you have enough 12 gauge wire to go from your relay to your fuel pump connector as well. Now you're going to need to buy a four pin relay. So the things you'll need a four pin relay, 15 amp inline fuse and plenty of 12 gauge wire. Now go into the car, remove all the interior on this side of the trunk so you can gain access to the fuel pump connector. When you do that, look for the stock wiring harness. You're going to have the four wires, you're going to have the power wire, the ground wire, and then the two wires on the bottom of the connector, which go to the warning lights and the gauge cluster. Those two, you're going to leave alone. We never touch those. Now the top two are the ones we're going to modify. So the top two connections, A and B, are for the power wire and the ground. Now originally, these would be closed and go straight through. We're going to cut them. And the power wire, you're going to take a new wire after you cut it and connect it to slot 85 of the relay. Slot 86 is going to come back around and connect to the ground in the harness. This is going to close the circuit in the harness. And when you want to start the car, you're going to have current come through here, power the coil, and that's actually going to close this plunger. So that's going to be your signal here for the coil. Then you're going to take your new power wire with the inline fuse and you're going to run it all the way to slot 30 of the relay. This is where you're going to get your fresh voltage from. That's going to go to the fuel pump. From 87, you're going to go with a fresh new wire all the way to your fuel pump. Now you're going to crimp this or solder this in to the other end of the power wire on slot A. And then the last wire that's left open is on slot B. You're just gonna make a new ground somewhere on the chassis nearby the connector. There's plenty of spaces around this area back here in the trunk. Just make sure you grind the paint down to the metal before you do it. And honestly, that's it. So if you have any questions about this, as always, ask in the comments down below. Why are you guys still here? Go home. Now, if you made it this long, thank you for watching. It probably means you might actually be interested in what's happening with my build. Well, if you see behind me, somewhere over there, I got a long list of things to finish. So, as I find things interesting, I'll make some YouTube videos about it that I think you guys might find helpful. Uh, if you find anything else you might, might want to know about, Go ahead and uh, leave me a comment down below. I might make a video about it. Or reach me on Instagram at rotary underscore night. Send me a DM. Or just send me a DM to say what's up. Anyways, thanks again for watching. Talk to you guys later. Adios.